Okay, hi everybody, this is uh, Mr. Manning again, and uh, this video is going to be about how to record transactions from your general journal over into your ledgers. Uh, just a quick review, uh, the ledgers is step two of the accounting process, and the reason we use ledgers is so that we can keep track of uh, transactions that are happen happening in each individual account. Uh, the main purpose of them is so that you can have a balance for every account. So, to be able to start the ledgers, you're going to need the following items. Uh, a blank set of ledgers, the completed general journal, and since we're going to be doing the month of May from your simulation, you need that one, uh, your cheat sheet that was provided to you, and of course a pencil. So, at this time, pause the video until you can get all those items in front of you, and then we'll get started. Okay, uh, hopefully you have all the items with you. Um, so what I have done is over here on the left hand side I have my general journal from the month of May and you can see that it is completed. Uh, you really shouldn't do the ledgers until you have completed the entire general journal. And then over here on the right hand side is my blank ledgers. Um, each ledger, the account name will be up here at the top and then the account number will be over here on the side. So all you do with these is you go line by line on your general journal. So I'm going to start with the transaction that happened on May 1st and I'm going to record into each account what date it happened and if it was a debit or a credit and for what amount. Uh, once I have more than one transaction I'm also going to update the balance each time and we'll talk a little bit about how to decide what the balance should be. So let's get started. On May 1st, we had the transaction of uh, a cash as a debit for $15,000. So I am going to record over here on my cash account. I'm on my ledgers now. I'm going to write May 1st. You can leave the item blank for the time being. Also, don't worry about post reference right now. We haven't really discussed that very much, so you can just leave that blank as well. Um, this was a debit of $15,000, so I'm going to record debit $15,000. And since I had no other previous transaction, my new balance is debit $15,000. I had nothing to add it to, so if I do a debit transaction of $15,000 here, that's what my new balance is. And that one's done. This post reference here you might have re you might remember that we left that blank the last time. Um, all that is is simply the account number that you just uh, posted the transaction into. So, for instance, on this one, my cash account number is 110. So I would record 110 right here. Let's move on to the second line. We also had to do Brian Dawson Capital, a credit of fifteen thousand dollars. So I am going to scroll down to my Brian Dawson Capital account. You might need to flip your page over. And just like before, I'm going to record May first. This one is a credit, so I'm going to make sure to put those $15,000 on the credit side. And since this is, once again, my first transaction, that is also my balance, $15,000 on the credit side. And then since this is account 310, I put 310 right here on post reference. Moving on, rent expense. So I'm going to go to my rent expense ledger. May 1st. A debit of 1,800. And that's my balance because I had no previous transactions, 1,800. We also had a cash credit of 1,800. So I need to go back to my cash ledger. I already have a transaction here, so to add a new transaction, I do not need to write the month again, but I do need to write the day just to show that it's a new transaction. So this also happened on the first, so I'm going to put another one. Now this time it was a credit, so I need to make sure that I put my $1,800 
on the credit side. Now, we need to pause for a moment and talk about how to determine the new balance. Um, the balance will always be a comparison between what you previously had in the account and what the new transaction is. I previously had $15,000 on the debit side. I am now recording a transaction of $1,800 on the credit side. If you look at your cheat sheet, and I just pulled mine up right here, if you look at your cheat sheet, it will tell you that if you look at the balance and the new transaction, if they are the same, you should add them together. And if they are different, you should subtract them. So here are some examples. If I have a debit balance and record a debit transaction, I add the numbers together. Well, that's not what I did in this case. I actually did this one. If I had a debit balance and record a credit transaction, I subtract the numbers. So in this particular instance, since I had a debit balance and recorded a credit transaction, I am going to subtract these two numbers to find my new balance. 15,000 minus 1,800 equals 13,200. And I'm going to record that on my debit side. Now you might be wondering, why did you choose debit over credit? The reason is, is because we still have more money on the debit side. 15,000 is much larger than 1,800. So whatever is left when I subtract these two remains on the debit side. Good, let's keep going. May 2nd, I had a miscellaneous expense for $105. So I'm going to go to my miscellaneous expense ledger. This is my first transaction, so I need to put the month, the day, which is May 2nd. This is a debit of $105. And since it's my first transaction in this particular account, that is also my balance, $105. We also had cash for a $105 credit. So back up to my cash account. This is my third transaction in my cash account. You will notice that cash gets used a lot. Uh, it's probably the most popular account just simply because whenever you buy or, or um, sell something, usually cash is involved. So this happened on May 2nd. I put a two. It was a credit of $105. This is very similar to what before. I still have a debit balance, a credit transaction. They're opposites. One's a debit, one's a credit. So I'm going to subtract these two. That equals $13,095. Also, don't forget, I kind of uh, forgot to mention it, I still need to record the account number here in the post reference. So my miscellaneous expense, that account number was 530. Cash, the account number is 110. All right, let's do maybe two more. We'll do both of these May 4ths. And then after that, I'll let you keep trying on your own. So on May 4th, we bought supplies, $405 debit. Going to scroll down to my supplies. This is my first transaction, so I need to put the month. May 4th. Debit, $450. Debit balance, $450. The account number is 150, so I need to record that right here, 150. I spent cash, credit, $450. So I'm going to go back to my cash account, the one that gets used a lot. On the next line that's available, I'm going to put the date, May 4th. Credit, $450. And then since it's a debit balance and a credit transaction, I'm going to subtract these two to get the number. Okay, so 13,095 minus 450 equals 12,645. And since I just recorded that transaction, I need to make sure to put the account number 
right here. Okay, we've only got one more to do and then I'm going to let you head off on your own. Prepaid insurance on May 4th. Got to find the prepaid insurance account. May 4th. Debit $1,200. It's my first transaction, so that's also my new balance, $1,200. Account number 160, so I record that right here on my post reference. Back up to my cash account. This transaction also took place on May 4th, so I put a 4. Credit, $1,200. One more time, debit balance, credit transaction, subtract the 2. So 12645 minus 1200 equals 11445 Okay, at this point I'd like for you to go ahead and keep uh, trying these on your own. You've just got a handful of transactions left. Uh, remember there are keys available at the front of the room, so you should check those periodically to make sure that you are on track. Uh, you of course can raise your hand and ask me, um, or I'm sure any of your classmates would be willing to help you if you're struggling and I'm not available. Good luck!